you been laying there brooding? I was just thinking how hard it must be for you to think that another woman is carrying my child. Yeah, it is. But I understand. And we are going to get through this. It may not be easy, but we'll get through it. You're right. Our love is stronger than ever. And we will. We'll make it through. Yes, we will. But you know what I'd like now more than ever? Hmm. I would like for the world to go away and leave us alone. At least for a little while. promising story. I'll put you both right on it. So do. Clint! The governor on line four. Is that your editorial yesterday? I'm on my way. Hi. Hi. I'm back. Well, maybe we can run that in the late edition. Are you okay? You sound like... Yeah, I'm fine. I'm just... I heard something about you, uh, resigning. I was thinking about it. Well, then I thought it was... Good. Smart move. You got yourself a plum job, and they don't grow on trees. Jobs, I mean, not plums. Clint told me that we'd be working together on this truck you got back. So here yeah. are my notes and clippings in the last few days. If you, if you have any questions. Just one. What made you decide to change your mind? that last question because it's really none of my business. I'm just glad that you decided to stay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be on my best behavior from now on. Captain, this had nothing to do with it. Yes, it did. I admit it. I let things get out of hand. We both did. Yeah, but it's not going to happen again. No, it's not. Because a lot of things have changed while you were away. Really? For instance? Oh, Cassie. How are we standing on that piece on, uh, oh, what's his name? You know, the son's so-called witness, the one that fingered Patrick Thornhart as a killer? Zuselenko. It's coming along. Well, tell it to come a little faster, will you? 
McKenzie's lead story just fell through, and suddenly I've got to fill a news hole as big as my steps. All right, is 3 o'clock early enough? Uh, it's not as soon as 2.30. You got it. Well, I'm not going to forget. Excuse me? Well, you said that things have changed. You're going to tell me what? Right, right. Okay, you're right. All right. Kevin, if we are going to work together, we're going to have to settle this. But I don't think we should do it here. Kathy, wait a minute. If we're going to have a conversation, I'd like to be there first. Good to see you, Bill. Thanks, Dylan. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. oh, no, no, no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hey, hey. What are you doing here? Look, you're not going to be any good to me if you start bleeding all over the floor. Go home. I'm not going to be any good to you if I die of boredom either. And what Nora doesn't know won't hurt her. So come on, anything new on the Hester investigation? Anything back in the lab? Fingerprints no. Fingerprints on the gun? No, anything? no, no, nothing. Nothing at all. Not that we need it. We know the gun belonged to Andy. We know that Antonio had access to the gun. We also know we that... We don't the... know anything, Hank. Hester took that gun with him when he went on board that ship, and anybody could have ended up with it including my candidate for shooter, Todd Manning. Yeah, well, we'll prove that theory would be nice. Uh, hey, Commissioner, it's great to see you. you. You here for the press conference? Uh, what press conference? Oh, you know, the mayor, later on at City Hall. Oh, boy. I heard rumors that she was going to pull a little stunt like this. You know, a sound bite blasting the department for dragging its, its heels on this Hesser murder. But I never thought that she would have the guts to go public and take shots at her own people. Well, all the trouble she's in, I mean, what's she got to lose? What time is this blessed event supposed to kick off? Noonish. Noonish? Mm -hmm. Ooh, that means it's gonna be live on the local news, right? Mm -hmm. You know something? We could have a little press conference of our own. Oh, you mean upstage the, the mayor? <laughs> now she pop a court. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I know. Emilio. Ah, yes, sir. Have Linda alert the media. Update on the Hesse case, right here. Coffee's on us. I'll get right on it. Right. Now, all we have to do is come up with something to say. So you tell me. Do we have a suspect or don't we? Yeah. Hi. Hey. No, I'm happy to see you. Ah, I can come back when you're a little happier. No, come on in. <laughs> okay. I got some good news for you. You are no longer on the A-list of suspects for Carlo Hess's murder. How did this happen? Hank, he finally made the connection between Todd and his newspaper star witness, Zeus Zelenko. <laughs> Zelenko got hauled in again, and lo and behold, it's Mr. Z. Did he have a memory failure? Well, now, <laughs> it could have been an Irish voice that he heard just before the gunshot sent again. Maybe it was an American. Possibly a seagull, or a bowl of wax fruit. Couldn't be sure. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you. Well, that's not, that's not the best of it. They found the murder weapon. It was not the gun that you took from Blair. So, you hear that sound, that hissing sound? That is the air coming out of the DA theory that you are Carlos' killer. Oh, <laughs> Angel, did you hear what? Yes, that's, uh, be excited, that's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for everything. Oh, hey, not me, this was, this was Todd Manning's little master plan, and it was gonna fall apart anyway. Why would you do this? Was he just trying to divert attention away from himself, or what was his thing? Why don't the police are looking into it. Yes, and? They're still looking into it. Oh. So, I was just on my way down to the police station right now to go get some little tidbits for take home to Bo. If I hear anything about your case, I'll let you know, okay? In the meantime, I think you guys can go back to doing what was that you were doing before I came and stopped you from doing it. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, so much. Anytime. Bye-bye. Good news! Oh! Ah, I was forgetting what that sounded like. I told you everything was going to be all right, and it will be. Come on. Well, promise? I promise. Nora, I'll get it for you. Nora, Blair, what can we do for you now? I'm here to see Patrick. And uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to see you alone, please. So, this uh, change of yours, is good news or bad news? Kevin, you know how much your friendship means. It's bad news. Look, Kevin. 
Things couldn't go on the way they were. Especially after Todd had used us as front page fodder for the sun. Look, I am as sorry about that as I possibly can be. I mean, that's part of the reason I went up to Texas to get away from here and let things cool off. I know, and I appreciate it. I really did. And I'm sure that you did, too. A little boy like that needs to get to know both parents. Yeah. Tell me about it. He cried so much when I left. But I am back here now, and uh, I have another rotten, evil, naughty little boy that I have to take care of named Todd Manning. Right. Well, to tell you the truth, now that the embarrassment has all died down, I feel like I should be thanking Todd. His uh, blackout bliss headline was tacky. But it might have come true if he hadn't plastered it all over every new stand in town. He forced me to look at where we were going. Uh, even before we got there, and... I really didn't like what I saw. And I didn't see any other way of ending it, except by leaving the banner. And, uh, what made you change your mind? Andrew. I told him everything. Everything that happened between us, and... I waited for the axe to drop. I never did. He was upset. He, he was really angry, but uh, he solved it in such an angry sort of way. Simply opened his heart. He forgave me, and he he's loving me. And it made me think about just what I was putting at risk. Are you not, uh, are you not just trying to talk yourself into this? No, Kevin, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm trying to talk you into it. I love my husband. Maybe more than ever now, and... I, am. Um, I have been giving you mixed signals for months now, and that's got to stop. And I didn't see any other way to do that except by leaving the banner. I've hurt you. And I'm sorry, because that's the hardest part of all this. Nah. I'm fine, really. Fine and dandy, as a matter of fact. So, uh, why don't we just go back to work? No, no, get away. I mean, don't you want to say anything? I mean, the time we may not get another chance. Kathy, what do you want me to tell you? I say we announced we found the murder weapon, and it's been identified as Detective Harrison's service revolver. No, 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 no. I don't want to bring Andy into this, okay? Not yet. Come on, Bo. Listen, you could really hurt yourself if you start trying to protect Antonio. I'm not trying to protect anybody except the department. Now, I don't want to start naming names until I'm sure that I've got somebody to arrest and you've got somebody to convict. So is that a deal? Oh, my God. Hey, honey, I got the haircut. Excuse me, do I know you? You can't be my husband because he's at home recuperating. He would never be so totally insane as to come to work already. So who are you? Hmm? Why don't you sit down? I was hoping to talk to you. Really? See, I was hoping that we could forget the whole thing, and then the world's worst case of morning sickness hit me this morning and changed everything. So, uh, yeah, we do need to talk about our problem. Yes, indeed. Yeah, I was on my way to the hospital. Margaret, so, I would like you to stay. And I'm, I'm late, with you. so goodbye, Blair, and I'll call you. Later. So how are you making out? Patrick, I am... Um, I've made a decision on how we can... How we can handle this... This mess. Look, Kevin. 
Kathy, I'm in the newspaper business, and sorry, but this isn't news. You're married, I know. You want to stay that way, I know. And it was all my fault, the whole affair or incident no, or whatever. No, Kevin, it wasn't. I didn't do anything I didn't want to do. Can you sit with me? Come here, Kevin. Listen to me. I was never very happy being this model mother, the, the, the perfect rector's wife. And so when I got back into journalism, I just... <laughs> this sudden rush of freedom. And then you came along, and you were charming, and you were attentive, and you were constantly available, and I guess I just wanted to see how far that freedom would take me. So that's what I was to you, huh? The chance to test you went. No. Oh, God, no. Kevin, that's the thing, I, when I... I couldn't stop thinking about you, that's why I should have walked away, and I didn't. Because I didn't, a man that I love. And you, a man that I... I really adore. We're both hurt. Badly. I've asked Andrew to forgive me, and I'm asking you. I'm so sorry that I was so careless with your feelings. Kevin, will you look at me? You are a very special, very wonderful man. And there isn't a woman out there who wouldn't be lucky enough to have you. Well, there's a bit of news in there. You deserve to be loved by someone who can love you. I can't. I made a sacred commitment when I married Andrew. And another one when I adopted River. And when I think about how close I came to breaking them, it just makes me sick. Well, then it's a good thing that we're having this conversation before lunch. Oh. You, Cannon. He is. Oh, gosh. He doesn't waste any time, does he? Uh, she's here. Yeah, we'll get right on it. Bye. What is it? That's Quint. Uh, Bo and Hank have decided to have a press conference, and he wants us there right away. Did they find a shooter? Let's hope not, Cass, because if they wrap up this Hesser murder, then we're going to be stuck covering flower shows together. Kevin? Cassie. Come on. Just wasting time. Coming home, where you're gonna act like the person who just came out of a coma. Right no. after the press conference. Press yeah. conference? Oh. No job is worth your health. Honey, I'm fine. You don't have to worry about me. Well, somebody does. I almost lost you there, Bo, and I think you a lot more than Landy ever will. Please, come on. Uh, excuse me. You two need to bond. I'll see you later. Come on. Honey, I mean, now relax. Look, I can take care of myself. Well, you'd better. Oh, no good at this bedside vigil business. Oh, people start shoving health food down my throat. You wouldn't even laugh at my joke. Oh, come here. Okay, come on. I admit it. I'm just a big jerk. Yes, you are. You're a big, fabulous, wonderful, fabulous, wonderful, beautiful jerk. I love you. Bo? Oh, good morning, Madam Mayor. Oh, of course, Madam Mayor, to my face. Meanwhile, you're sabotaging me behind my back. You and Hank better have some progress to report at this little press conference you're having, or it's going to turn into a giant fiasco. Trust me. How about a cup of tea? You make yourself at home. No, Patrick, no, I... I don't want any tea, and I don't want to make myself at home. I... I just... I, I really just want to get this over with, okay? See... I'm here because I, I made a decision about... I... I'm... I'm sorry, just one second. <laughs> Phone her. Dean, yes, hi. Um, I, I, yeah, I heard some parents were complaining to the office. But, um, as it happens, I've been told by my lawyer that the police think that I'm innocent. And, and you can follow that up with a, with a call to the DA. Uh, yes, I... I <laughs> 
I am too, believe me. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'm sorry, that was the... I heard, and... Uh, so Hank cleared you. Seems that way. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad. Are you all right? I'm fine. I'm just, um... Uh, I'm tired. I haven't slept much lately. It's given me a lot of time to thank Patrick. And to make a decision about everything. About everything? Well, about this pregnancy. That is everything right now. And, uh, and I've decided that I'm not going to have this baby. Blair, I can see how that right now might look like the easy way out. Easy? This has been easy. No, 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 I, no. I, I didn't. That's not what I meant. I came out wrong. What I, what I meant to say was, maybe there's a better way to handle this. Look, I. You've been a perfect. You've been a perfect gentleman, Patrick. But this is happening to me, okay? Yes, but that's not entirely true. That there's a baby growing inside of you, and I'm half the reason that it is. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, Mrs. Johnson, yes, listen, uh, for whatever this is, could, could it please wait till the next time I see you in class? Uh, no, it makes me feel very good that the students think that I'm innocent, yes, uh, and by such a wide margin. No, no, nobody's railroading me off campus. I, I, I'm what? A petition. No, I don't... Mrs. Johnson, if you... I'm... Help. I'm sorry. Uh, apparently, some students are coming over to show their support. So there's things we can discuss. We shouldn't be doing it here. Well, Patrick, come on. There's nothing. On. There's nothing to discuss. I... Yes, I think there is. I think there is. Hello, Marty. Good. Hi. How you doing? Well, that's what I'm here to find out. Another neurology appointment? You got it. Well, Dr. Robbins is up in surgery, but she shouldn't be too long. You can have a seat in uh, the waiting room. Actually, I think I'll stand. I've been sitting quite quite enough lately, so... That's true. <laughs> Look how far you've come. Everyone tells me they're optimistic for a full recovery. Yeah, so am I. Well, you deserve <clears> it. <throat> After everything you've been through. Oh, thanks. Things are going good for you, too, right? I mean, I hear that Patrick is pretty much in the clear from the Carlo Hesser murder. Yes, yes. Yeah. And everything else? I mean, are you happy? <laughs> now, you listen, Alex. As an elected public official, if I choose to call a press conference, I'll do it any time I like. Let me remind you that I am still the mayor of this town, entitled to speak to the press any time I want. So, if I have something to say during your little press conference, I'll say it. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. All right, excuse me. May I have your attention, please? Everybody, just, just quiet down, please. Thank you. Now, listen, I've got two pieces of good news. The first being that Commissioner Buchanan will be handling this press conference. Both. All right, boom. Don't clap for me. Uh, clap for my surgeons. All right, they think that I should. Uh, I should have a lot more bed rest. My wife agrees yeah. with them. <laughs> but I wanted to be here to announce that we have a major break in uh, the Carlo Hesser murder case. Mm. Uh, LPD scuba team has discovered the murder weapon in Lantano Bay. So whose gun was Where'd it? Where'd you find it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let the man finish his statement. Thank you, Hank. Um, the gun in question is a 38 caliber. Ballistics has confirmed that it matches the bullet that killed Carlo Hesser. Forensics is trying to pull uh, a print from the gun now, so luckily we may be able to find out who used the gun. Um, and that's about it for right now. Have you identified the owner of the gun, he or she? Uh, there's no comment 
on that at this moment. You haven't mentioned Mr. Thornhart here today. Um, are we to assume that he's no longer a suspect? Well, Kathy, I can confirm you that the witness who placed Mr. Thornhart at the scene has now retracted a statement, and at this point, there's no evidence linking Patrick Thornhart to the killing. Well, what about the theory that Todd Manning may have set up Mr. Thornhart to protect himself? Well, we aren't in the uh, theorizing business, Cassidy. No comment. Hank, if anything you can add? Yes, I do. No comment. That's about it for uh, for now. Thank you. We'll keep you posted. Okay? I have something to say for the record. I share the frustration with all of the people of Landview that this crime has not been solved. There is a murderer running loose on the streets of our city. And I am deeply concerned with the failure of this police department and in this investigation. Uh, excuse me, but just to clarify the, the mayor's statement here, this investigation by her own police department, well, it continues. There has been no failure, just the normal workings of justice. Now, the killer will be caught, and that's the end of this press conference. Thank you very much. Uh, they call that a press conference? Yes, I guess so. Gentlemen. Very informative. I'm not going to push this any further right now, but I would like to know why, when you have a perfectly clear, obvious suspect, why the DA and the police commissioner have not made an arrest. about you, but something tells me that Hank and Bo were not being totally honest and forthright with all of us people from the press there. Back from the press conference? Oh, Clint, that was no press conference. That was an iceberg. Nine cents of the truth laid out of sight. So, fill me in. Let's see. The murder weapon found. Its owner unidentified. Patrick exonerated. Bo recovering. Hank secretive. And Alex. She was there, too, and she was Alex. What more can I say? It looks more certain than ever that Patrick was set up by Todd. Probably to throw suspicion off himself. Okay. Write it up. Work in the press conference and try not to set up any legal alarms. Mm -hmm. I think the key to this whole thing is Zeus. Yeah. Todd's little sidekick from hell. Apparently, he and Todd had quite a history together. Patrick says that he saw Zeus at the Wild Swan. The night somebody spiked his team maneuvered him into bed with Lance. And that was the same night that Star Manning was kidnapped. Now, anybody who's going to help Todd with this little deed... Oh, would have no problem framing Patrick with some fairy tale about an overheard Irishman and a shot in the dark. Shall we nail them both? It would be my pleasure. Okay. Except, wait a second. What? Blair, I'm a little worried about her. Why? I thought they were both finished. Oh, they are. They are finished. Now more than ever. Blair is pregnant with Patrick's baby. <laughs> what does Uncle Todd think about all this? Oh, he's not very happy. He's planning to use his pregnancy in a fight to get Star. Mm, another tender moment by Todd Manning. I just don't think we should get him any angrier right now. Oh, I think now is the perfect time to get him angrier. Why don't we pull a Todd on Todd? I mean, the guy's committed so many crimes already, I think he just needs to add a little murder to round off his resume. It would certainly explain why he went through such trouble to try and set up Patrick Thornhart. Huh? Come on. It'll be easy. All we have to do is raise the possibility that maybe Todd is also a potential killer. And we throw in a couple of facts and make it look convincing. That's what, like, um... Like his criminal record. Right? Yes, we throw in the criminal record and we use this guy, uh, Zeus, and, um, um, and nothing. We don't have enough to kind of murder rap on time. In fact, we don't really have enough for a good smear. Well, that never would have stopped him, would it? No, it wouldn't, but what's the point of being something if you can't be better than Todd Manning? Besides, we'd never get it past my dad. Anyway, Cass, we do have a good enough story right here. Todd tried to set up an innocent man. Where have I heard that one before? And just like last time, every single bit of it is the truth. Yeah. Wow, we're really almost got carried away. Yep, almost. And every time we do that, disaster surely isn't far behind. I'll rework the draft and try to get a comment from Patrick. You just uh, added him here from the press conference. Okay. Let's get him. Yeah. Okay. Um, Doc 
Dr. Robbins is called away on an emergency, so I may want to reschedule. All right, sure. As soon as you tell me the bad news. Who told you? Oh, well, you've been telling me all morning long. I love everything but words. Well, I guess everyone's gonna know soon enough. Blair's pregnant, and Patrick is the father. Mm, Marty. Sometimes the things we aren't ready for that hit us the hardest. I know. Uh, sorry to hear that. Thanks. It means a lot. Listen, I understand if you don't want to talk about it, but, um, under the circumstances, how are things between you and Patrick? No, this won't change anything between Patrick and me. But it hurts. It hurts a lot. Oh, I bet it does. I mean, I know how much you wanted children, and, uh, I'm sure Patrick and you have been talking about that as well. I'll tell you something, Marty. You've got a big heart. And I'm sure you'll find room in that heart of yours for that child and for the children that you'll have on your own. In fact, I'm, I'm positive you will. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I haven't really begun to think that far ahead. Nobody has. I mean, Patrick is willing to be a good father to this child. And but unfortunately, it's what Blair wants that matters now. Patrick, you... You're building a life with Marty, and you can't do that in the shadow of a family that you don't want. And I'm trying to keep my life with Star, and I could lose her if, if a judge decides that an illegitimate child would make me an unfit mother. I mean, that seems to be pretty simple to me. Painfully simple, yes. But then you understand that, that there's no room for this child in our lives. Well, then we have to make room, Blair. Oh, come on, Patrick. Why, why are you being like this? Is this some religious thing? Or no, something? it's what nothing to do with that. What I can't get out of my head is that there's a, a child growing inside of you. A child that we created. And it doesn't matter if we planned it or, or if we want it or don't want it. It's on its way. And I find it overwhelming. My choice, my body. You can't change my mind. Come on, Bo. Come on. If the press conference is over, it's time for you to stop well, being Commissioner Buchanan and start being patient. Listen to you, right? Go home. If there's any problem, I'll let you know. Yeah, well, I'm going to take the phone off the hook. Let's get into our warm beds and cold refrigerator. Ooh. Just a second. Answer my question. Why haven't you arrested the most obvious suspect? Well, I have a better question. Uh, who is the most obvious suspect? Hey, you didn't tell us. I found Carlos Will naming Antonio Obega as the chief beneficiary. So? So forget what Carlos did to Andy. That Will is Antonio's real motive. And certainly worth some special consideration from the district attorney's office. Alex, I did not promise you a deal. I promised that I would look at the will, and I am. Well, that's not good enough. Let me warn you. If you sit on this evidence, I will take it to the only court that counts in this business, the court of public opinion. And I will demand the arrest of Antonio Vega, and I will fire you, and I will feed you to the voters. You got that? <laughs> Uh, I need to get home and help Andrew. The, uh, the Christmas Eve services are coming up and it's still a lot of work to do. All right, well then, cut that, move that. Take a little parsley and serve immediately. Great work, Carpenter. Thanks. Kevin, your opinion matters a lot. You know, Cass, my son threw a little temper tantrum at the Dallas airport. He uh, cried uncontrollably when I had to leave him again. So I know what a little house of horrors, a broken home can be. And I promise you, I will never be responsible for another one again. So please, promise me. No more talk about resignation, okay? No, I'm safe. Good. Thanks for making that possible. It's good. 
most of the paper. You see, uh, I'll be running the paper one day, so I've got to keep things... See ya. I'm giving this story a drink by life. Great, thank you. Hello, Rita. Hi, it's Kevin Buchanan. Yes, I know, it has been a long time. Uh, oh, nothing much, this and that, trying to stay out of trouble. Uh, look, uh, Rita, I was thinking, and uh, things really got off on the wrong foot between us last time, and I was hoping um, if it's not too late, I'd like to try again. Are you free for lunch tomorrow? Um, uh, you're not just using me for another story, are you? Oh, absolutely. But this is the story of a very lonely man and a very beautiful woman and, let's say, a Caesar salad for two. Can you help me write it? Um, I hate Caesar salad. Well, I'm easy. We'll make it end dive then. What do you say? You will? Well, super. I'll pick you up then. Great. Oh, Rita. I promise you, this time, you won't be disappointed. Bye. Sure, I will. I... Well, I'll tell you what. I'll let you get back to work. I'll uh, take off. You take care of yourself, all right? Thank you. Oh, Kevin. Oh, hi, Marty. Hi. Um, I'm free for the rest of the day. You ready to make a little Christmas? I sure am. Shall we go? Bye. See ya. Bye. Patrick, this is not something to vote about. I came to tell you my decision not to debate it. What I want is a voice. And you're against it. Yes, I am. Look, Patrick, I know that you're trying to do the right thing. Well, just listen to me. I mean, are you going to be there when I'm eight months pregnant and Star wakes up in the middle of the night and there's no one there for her? And are you going to skip your classes at, at the, the university to take me to Lamar's classes? And then when I do go into labor, you're going to leave Marty at home to rush me to the hospital and after you and Marty have had kids, are, are you just going to drop everything when this child calls? I swear to you, I will do whatever needs to be done. Oh, Patrick. Yes. Lovingly and willingly at first. But you will grow to resent it. And the visits will come less often. And then when they do come, they'll, they'll be so cold that I'll grow to hate them myself. And meanwhile, I'll still be a mother 24 hours a day. Two children. No father and no time off for good behavior. Now, you can afford to be romantic about all of this, but I can't, Patrick, really. I can see that now. And I agree the choice is yours. But I, I don't want you to rush it. 